I felt really inspired by the weekend songs like Blinding Lights, Sacrifice and Take My Breath lately, which is why today we're exploring how to produce a song combining these styles. So I wanted to start with an intro and the goal was to set this dark, suspenseful vibe, kind of like in Blinding Lights. And I found this preset called Liquid Swell in Omnisphere, which is made of this Nord Lead oscillator over here. And this one just plays a static C for four bars, while I'm first of all automating its filter cutoff that is slowly being opened up so it gets increasingly growly. And second, I am automating this band one over here, which is making sure that as we move through the intro, the low end gets slightly less and less, which helps us transition into the verse. So with this four bar sustained bass down, I wanted to add something high, some kind of short melodic phrase also inspired by the intro of Blinding Lights. And that is when I found this Omnisphere preset called Sweeper Pad. And I came up with the following melody for the intro. And this C over here on which I end is basically playing throughout the rest of the song. So that is both the final note of our melody, but also serves as this atmosphere element that literally plays throughout the entire song. And then I wanted to add another atmosphere layer to support this liquid swell bass and sweeper pad synth. And for that, I'm using this blinding lights lead that I found on Splice. But instead of it serving as an actual lead, it just plays this arpeggio, which is made up of the note C, which is the root note of our song which is in C minor and this G which is the perfect fifth of C and therefore also works with practically any chord within the scale. And finally we needed some kind of riser to transition from the intro into the verse and that's why I created this white noise riser using the legendary 3x ask plugin from Apple Studio. And this is really just made up of three noise oscillators but to turn this into a sweep I'm applying this EQ over here and I'm automating this band over here. And you'll be able to see what this does as I play this white noise riser with the EQ enabled. So with the intro down, I started thinking about a verse and what it should sound like. So I found this cool preset in Omnisphere called See Through Brass, which is made of this Juno 60 oscillator. And I started messing on my keyboard when I eventually came up with the following progression. So I really like this as a basis for our verse, but I also figured let's add some more elements, which is why I'm introducing this bass synth over here, which consists of two plugins. The first one is this chorus ballad Juno 60 preset from Trillion, which sounds like this. And to then add some extra low end to this, I am adding this sub preset from Silent One, which is called the Deep Sub, which I use in practically every song. And that sounds like this. So together, these two make up the bass line, which sounds like this. Now, crucially on this subs mixer track, I am applying this EQ instance, which is rolling off the ultimate low end of our sub. And I'm only enabling this EQ during the verse and the pre to make sure we're not giving away all the bass or low end just yet. And that is why I am disabling it in the chorus, which is this little trick I like to apply that just makes the chorus a little more impactful compared to the rest of the song as we saved up our low end for the chorus. And then I'm also making sure that the atmosphere arpeggio from the intro is playing in the verse and together with our breaths and bass that sounds like this. So I really like this, but I definitely felt we needed some more energy here, which is why I'm introducing some drums. First of all, this Lin kick, a Lin snare, the 707 snare to support our Lin snare, this acoustic hat from Apple Studio's native drum pad plugin, 
And at the end of the eighth bar, I'm introducing this clap, which also comes from FL Studio's drum pad plugin. And together with this exhaust sample over here, these sound like this. So this clap at the end of the verse really helps us transition into the pre-chorus. And this is where I wanted to do something different in terms of chord progression. So I went for the following chords. So I definitely felt this was a nice variation to the chord progression from the verse, but I also felt this really worked as a pre-chorus progression because it ends on this like open question, like it doesn't end in a resolved way. And interestingly, I do feel it kind of resolves on the second chord, which is this D sharp major chord over here. So let's play that for a second. Like there it feels like we're kind of brought home as a listener, but then in the second half of the progression, we're definitely going toward a more unresolved ending. And that's definitely caused by this G minor as well as G minor seven chord at the end. And I definitely wanted the pre-chorus to end in this unresolved way because I wanted to save the resolution for the chorus, which we'll discuss later in this video. Now, apart from the changing chords, we're not doing that much different in the pre-chorus. We're basically using the same elements, the same drums, the same bass, although the bass does respect the new chords. As we can see, the bass line plays the new chords bass notes. But I am introducing one new element, which is this harp synth from Serum. And this plays this little counter melody that I felt is very typical for the weekend. Like if you listen to his songs, you'll definitely hear some background synth playing some additional melody in between his vocals. And on this little harp synth, we play the following counter melody. which actually kind of acts as this mirror to the melody phrase we introduced in the intro, which went. And now we go. which is very similar, but it's a little variation to the one we introduced in the intro. And I'm using this variation because it just follows the chords in the pre-chorus more nicely. And in the second half of our pre-chorus, I am again introducing our little noise riser from the intro, but now to transition from pre into the chorus. And to improve this transition, I am also introducing this synth from Omnisphere. So this one starts on a C, then rises up an octave to this new C, and this new C then plays throughout the entire chorus. And that really just glues these two sections together because we have this element starting in the pre that also plays during the chorus. And in my opinion, that's a really nice trick to improve transitions between two sections. So as this tonal riser guides us to the chorus, I wanted to introduce a new chord progression that was a little more reminiscent of the verse progression. So I actually copied that, but made it a little more uplifting and resolved. And that resulted in the following chord progression. And as you can hear and see, we are also adding these little notes in between that kind of turn our chord progression into more of a melodic phrase. And I feel that makes our chords a little more catchy in the chorus. Now to make our chorus more impactful, I'm introducing some new elements that mainly serve as supporting layers. For example, we have this bass layer over here, which is the Blinding Lights bass preset also found on Splice. And this just adds a little bit of a growl to our bass synth, which sounds like this. And then I'm also introducing this Omnisphere preset called Solid Poly Compression, which emphasizes our little melodic phrase resulting from the new chord progression we just introduced. That sounds like this. And to solidify our chords, I'm introducing this chords layer, which is the Power Pop Poly Comp preset from Omnisphere, which sounds like this. 
which has a little more of this vowel-y timbre, and that is why it nicely complements our existing chords from the see-through brass preset. Then another thing I'm doing to make our chorus a bit more interesting and to add some movement to our chorus is introducing this additional pitch bend on our tonal Juno riser, which makes it go from this new C we just talked about to A sharp, back to the C, back to the A sharp. And finally, I'm introducing some new drum and effect sounds to our chorus to just add a bit more energy and impact, such as this hi-hat loop from the Oliver pack, as well as this crash, this crowd exhaust sample from the Cashmere pack, which plays on the second beat, which is layered with this clap effect from the Cashmere pack. And as we are talking about energy levels, I wanted to drop the energy halfway in the chorus. So after four bars, I'm basically dropping all the energy by just stripping away all the elements. And on this like little one beat of space, I am adding this breath sample from the Cashmere pack which has a fourth note delay. And to then transition back into our energetic chorus, I am using this breath sweep also coming from the Cashmere pack. And with all elements enabled, this little drop in energy sounds like this. And that's really it in terms of production of our The Weeknd style song. So the final thing I had to do was add in some vocals by The Weeknd and I actually found that Take My Breath is in the same key and also works quite nicely with our different chord progressions within the song. So I added it into our session and that really completed this song. Now I'd highly encourage you to go download the free project file, the stems and the MIDI files down below so you can study the entire session at your own pace. Also if you enjoyed this video please leave a like like and subscribe to the channel to become part of our community of musicians and music lovers. Now I can't wait to see you all next week and let's now listen to the final result of our The Weeknd song. I saw the fire in your eyes.